Alrighty. <laughs> I got a busy morning this morning. I bet I've got a client who just was like, I just saw you. I just saw you. Hey. Um, anywho, um, am I live? Is this thing on? Tick, 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 tick. Is this thing on? Hey, um, this is Beth, Destination Decluttered. Um, busy morning for me. Ani, nice to see you. Um, this is where we do the little uh, romper room intros. I love it. Um, I am, um, yeah, I'm going to put on Beth2177. I, too, am a Beth, and I was just about to introduce myself. Rose Quartz, Lisa V. I see some people. Looks like Margaret Treed, Margaret Treed, Margaret Reed, Tracy. Nice to see you. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm in the United States. I am on the eastern seaboard. Well, technically not on the seaboard. So funny. I will share, and I'm just kind of chatting while people are tuning in. I want to give people um, an opportunity to kind of come in and sit down and get comfortable. Um, funny thing is, good morning, Mrs. Birkin just joined. Morning. Oh, Margaret, you're in PA as well. So here's the funny thing. I grew up um, in Massachusetts. I've always been a coastal gal all my life. My husband um, is from Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, also at the beach. I still kind of, even though I've been in PA almost 20 years, I cannot, I always forget that we're technically landlocked. And the reason I say that is technically we have, I guess, it, is it the Schuylkill River, the Delaware River, the one that separates us and, and Jersey? But like literally, I think we are physically closer to the ocean than some people who live in like um, other unlandlocked states. So I kind of look over New Jersey to see the ocean. Um, but yeah, I'm on the Eastern seaboard and uh, <laughs> Beth's got some need of some decluttering motivation and tips. Let's go. All right, Beth, I gotcha. How about this? So um, yep, some people are tuning in. I am Beth, decluttering life coach, um, destination decluttered. And, and weird, I just got a phone call from my doctor's office. Strange. They'll leave a message. I'm doing well. I'm glad you like my page. So here's what I want to share. And I thought, sorry, start with the destination in mind. Okay. Over here, if you look behind me, here's the thing. So this is a TikTok live and I upload these to um, the Destination Decluttered uh, YouTube channel when I'm done. And this is so folks can watch them and listen to them listen to them at your leisure when it's convenient for you. And what you see on these rarely changes. It's usually me, my big old Irish face. And um, the only thing I will say is I will occasionally be pointing behind me. So if you've never noticed this before, so behind me on the wall, I've got like a pin. I've got a pinpoint that's like on a map and a little car and a dotted line. And then this other pin over here, right? So this other pin over here is what it's all about. Okay, this is your destination. This is your destination decluttered. This is your destination dream life. This is your whatever. So before you even start your decluttering, spend a little bit of time and say, why am I even doing this? Why am I even gonna start this journey, do this thing? Where am I headed towards? And the reason I say this is because I am a, um, certified life coach. And so I tend to look at things from a perspective of when I am more, when I feel better, I get motivation, decluttering motivation and tips. You're going to be more motivated, Beth, when you can envision how your home is looking when you've decluttered it. What does your decluttered home look like? What does your decluttered home feel like? AKA, how do you feel when you're in your decluttered home? Okay. And then also, and do not underestimate the power of this one. How does your decluttered home function? How do you want your home to function? And I'm talking about simple, easy, easy squeezy, easy, 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 so that you spend a, a minimum amount of time doing the things you have to do so that you have a maximum amount of time in your life doing the things you want to do, okay? So I say this, for motivation, motivation is, and this is the other thing, so I will point to points on the map. Here's where you are today. There's where you want to go, how to get there. Um, and what I want to offer is, again, in that road trip kind of metaphor, because I used to write about road trips. I have a website that I did for Desti uh, Retro Roadmap, it was called for years. So I know how to do a road trip. But what I want to say is, you are on a road trip called your life, and um, you, are the, you are behind the steering wheel. 
you are in the driver's seat, okay? So just remember that driving m m metaphor and know that pretty much every single day of your life, you need to ignite the spark. You need to turn the keys in your ignition to get yourself sparked up and revved up and ready to go. And when you do that, it's going to be so much easier for you when you are heading towards something you want to do. Okay. So just even notice that and then say, okay, what's just getting in the way of me doing that. So start with the destination in mind, get excited about it. And then we can break it down into little milestones. Okay. I am the universe needs help. Hey, I'm here for you. The universe sent me to you and to all y'all, right? Um, I have a tiny New York apartment. It's not cluttered. I just have to fit everything into it. Now, here's a fun thing is um, I do one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching with people on Zoom. I do consultations, things like that. And when we do that, we get to talk to each other, right? Zoom, you know? Here, the way I do the, the only way we can, um, we get in touch on a TikTok Live is for me to read your comments. And the thing that I love is that the, the words we use, everybody think about this. The words we use to talk to ourselves and to other people reveal something about us. So I am the universe is saying, I just have to fit everything into my New York apartment. It's not cluttered, but I need to fit everything into it. So I get curious about words like everything. If we were, if we were coaching, I'd say, what is everything? Do you need everything? Are there things that you have that you just don't necessarily need? Could you, everything, some things, I want to have some things in my home versus everything, right? Get curious about what you say to yourself. That's where it's all at. I'm telling you right here, the things you tell yourself that make you feel a feeling, that make you do a thing. There we go. There we go. My necessities, I already have a lot away. Okay, I noticed that. Wonderful. So necessities. Okay, you've got a lot of crystals. You know, what I want to say is we all make decisions on the stuff we want to keep in our lives. And that varies from person to person. This is where I love that everybody's brain and everybody's situation is different. That's why one-on-one -on -one coaching is so great. But what I will offer to you, I am the universe, and to everybody is to think about the things that you feel are important for you to keep. And also think about the things that even right now in your life used to be important and maybe aren't so much anymore. What do you want to keep? And if you've made a decision to keep it, the next question should be, okay, if I want to keep this, where is a place that makes sense for me to store this? And make sense is where we get into the functionality of your home. Is it easy for me to get to? Is it easy for me to use it? Is it easy for me to put it away? All right. Just notice that if you don't have enough storage space, you may have, a, you know, a small New York apartment, but also notice what you are storing in your storage. And do you really need those things? You know, I will say that that notion of a really small space and doing things makes you hone in on having fewer items of better quality. Just notice that about everybody. Sometimes we think we just need a storage space. We just, all that is, is deferred um, decision-making. It's delayed decisions to say, do I need this or not? Oh, my house is so big. But then all you do is allow yourself to, to pile up, okay? Um, hope that helps. Um, one thing I do want to mention, and I'm just trying to get it up on my calendar here, is if you're interested, I do have the, um, I do have the uh, uh, Destination Decluttered um, uh email mailing list. If you're interested in um, getting on that, you get a free habit tracker. I just started mine up for this right here. Um, you get that. Uh, you get a free Zoom, um, group Zoom. I do a group Zoom once a month. I'll be sending out uh, the one for September at some point, and I do all sorts of fun stuff for just the people on the mailing list. So if you're interested in that, destinationdecluttered.com slash join, sign up, all sorts of good stuff there. Um, that being said, let me hop back into the comments. So we've got Cordio Vivi. After crazy childhood and many deaths, I have so much stuff. And because my father used to burn my stuff as a child, I did body collect and everything and keep it new. Hard to let go of things. Deceased. Okay. I get where you're coming from. I want to offer you this. Everybody, notice that you have a thought in your head. You have a story in your head. You have words in your head, a story, some sentences, some thoughts that make you feel some way. Because of this, I feel this way. And because I feel this way, I do this thing. I have the story of my past that makes me feel like this. And so how I handle it is I do this. You know what I mean? So just notice that you do this. And if what you do gets you the result you want, keep doing it. But I have a feeling what you're doing 
isn't getting you the result you want. So that's when you want to stop. You want to put your little traffic cop hand out and be like, wait a minute, what I'm doing isn't working. What I'm thinking isn't working because it's making me feel a feeling. It's making me do a thing. Stop. Get curious about your thoughts. Everybody get curious about the thoughts that are keeping you stuck doing the things you're doing. And then notice that there is going to be an opposite. There's going to be an other side of that, but on the other side of any, any, um, Unhelpful thought is a helpful thought. You can create a more helpful thought. You can realize where you came from. You say, okay, that's where I came from. Where do I want to go? You know, what do I want my home to look and look like now? Sorry, the AC just came on. It can be too cold and I can't fix it. Okay. So just notice that. Okay. Um, yeah. And here's the thing. Yep. Okay. Here's the thing. Cordio V, V, I will offer. The The problem is not with your, your storage. It's, and I will say the problem. Just get curious about the thoughts in your head that are stopping you from having, you feeling good about this, right? Um, just notice that. Um, yep, deferred decision-making, it is. Um, and the, here's a great thing, um, is decision-making is, the way I approach it is, I believe that decluttering is a life skill. It is a life skill because if you have it, you're not cluttered. If you know how to declutter, you're not cluttered. You're not showing up at TikTok, following a TikTok from a declutter person. If you don't have it, that's okay. You either never learned how to do it or your brain doesn't, you know, you haven't found a system that works for you. That's all right. But what I want to offer too, and I want to share and I want to declare is that really decluttering is decision-making. Up here, up here equals what's in front of you. The more you think about what do I want my home to look like? How do I want to, f and answer that question up here. How do I want to feel in my home? How do I want my home to function, right? That's when you get your destination. And then you know what your roadblocks are, everybody. All of our roadblocks are thoughts in our heads that cause us to feel feelings in our hearts and then cause us those feelings and thoughts cause us to do something or not do something. It's kind of as simple as that. And the better you can get at making decisions about, do I want this in my life or not? You are then constructing a life you want filled with things you want because you've also learned to get rid of the other things. See, this is the cool thing I gotta share is that I love the fact that Decluttering is a way of practicing creating the life you want because you're practicing with tangible objects. It's it's a little bit, to me, I love life coaching. Do not get me wrong. There's massive, awesome stuff, but you can learn the tenets of life coaching. You can, your life will benefit when you learn how to think differently about your stuff and feel differently about your stuff. So you do different stuff with your stuff, <laughs> okay? So just notice that there's a combo. There's a, there, this is how I coach about it. There, I know there's a lot of people out there who do decluttering and stuff like that. This is my approach because it works and I show up. If I showed up, I got to be honest with you. If I showed up and all I did was ever show you how to go from light to dark, big to small, heavy to light, um, you know, how to fold things, I would be bored out of my effing gourd. I would not show up for that because it's boring. What I think is fascinating is seeing that connection between our heads and our results, right? And the thoughts that we all have, myself included. I did a TikTok yesterday about how I've been eating too much and exercising not enough and I'm not feeling good. And so I, as a life coach, am recommitting to getting back on my own, coaching myself and tracking my habits more and making sure that I factor in time to do some exercises and be mindful of the stuff I bring into my body and the stuff that I keep away, okay? Notice the words you use. And when I do these TikTok lives, um, I get to see your words because it's the words you chose to type out. So that being said, let me scroll back here um, and see what else we have here. Um, Kathy is saying, Kathy McKenzie Smith, I have such anxiety of letting go of things. Kathy, just notice, everybody, if anybody has anxiety of letting go of things, it's because you have a thought. A thought, Johnny. That's my Boston accent, my thought. You have a thought about that stuff that's causing you to feel anxious about getting rid of it. Just notice it. There's a sentence in your head. There are some words in your head. 
get curious about that sentence. And when you write that sentence down, then we can translate it into something more helpful that might make it easier for you to let things go, right? Notice this thing, none of your business. I am bad at, I am bad at make decision making. This is gonna sound really simple. I am bad at decision making is a thought you have that then stops you from making decisions. So therefore you don't get better at decision making because you don't make decisions. Notice that there is a self-perpetuating, there's like a self-fulfilling prophecy here. If you say I'm bad at decision making, then you don't make decisions. Then you don't have practice making decisions. The more decisions you make, the easier it gets. And the more decisions you make with the goal in mind, with the end in mind of, is this decision gonna get my life the way I want it to or not? It's just like building a muscle. It's just like, it's building a muscle up here. I mean, your brain's not a muscle, it's kind of like smoochy, but like it's building that practice of saying, is this gonna get me what I want or not? And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? But you need to practice making those decisions. And that's why I show up, um, with decluttering because we start with stuff that's easy. Like, is your, is your countertop messy, right? It, do you have surface clutter? I talk about the three levels of clutter when I, when I coach surface clutter, stored clutter, sentimental clutter, right? Sentimental is usually the stuff that you have a hard time getting rid of or doing something with making decisions upon because it involves your heart and your, your thoughts and all that. So start with the simple stuff. Are your surfaces cluttered? You can practice making decisions about, does this belong here? Yes or no? I'm going to decide what to do with this. Okay, notice that. Um, Issa Wera, it's hard getting organized in no time and not all of us has huge houses with lots of space. Yeah, nobody ever said you need to have a whole huge house with lots of space. If anything, I will share with you, having too much space can make it even worse because you just, you know, it just makes it worse. Smaller spaces, we were talking about in a, a, a New York City apartment, causes you to be really mindful and really focused on, do I really need this or not? My house is not big by any stretch. It is small, but I love it. I have just the right amount of stuff in my home. I probably have like 10% more than I need, but it's not getting in my way. I'm not actively adding more to it. I'm not adding to my clutter. I enjoy it. I'm at just right as far as that goes, right? And it's not a small, it's not, it's not a big house. A big house and more money can make things different, more difficult because you could buy storage spaces. You can buy more stuff. When you don't come from a lot, you notice that. Okay. Tamara Tamacaroni is saying, I think I was meant to hear you today. The universe provides. I love it. Yeah. I do this all, not all the time. I will share this. So I do show up regularly. I say regularly. Every week it's a different day and it's a different hour because I have a flexible life and I love that. Um, so I do TikTok lives often. Um, and when I do, if you are on my destination decluttered email mailing list, you know about when they happen like before anybody else. But I also do a video and I pin it to the top of my TikTok page um, that says the schedule. So you know when I'm gonna be on here this week. Right now, I am looking at my own calendar. I've got a busy calendar this week, but it's awesome. I love it. I am, don't, do not get me wrong. Um, what I will say is, um, I show up to help you. I am here for you, um, to help you get to where you want to go, clutter wise and otherwise. Okay. So I show up, I do inspirations. If you got questions, um, notice it's just putting, different thoughts in your head to kind of swirl around to maybe plant a seed that you want to water. Say, is that true? Could I use that? You know, why do I think she's full of crap? I, why am I not believing her? You know, or, or man, that really hit home today, that type of thing, okay? Oh, thank you for all the, I just noticed a bunch of people just followed me. If you haven't followed my TikTok page, could you, what is that? Drop me a follow, do me a solid. There's this weight loss coach guy, wicked funny from uh, Ireland that I follow, I, I follow because he just amuses me. And he's got like, yeah, I like the way he approaches things. No nonsense. Us, we Irish. Uh, and anyhow, um, yeah, drop me a follow, pick up a follow. I don't know, but that would be really cool. Okay. Here's a funny thing. So user 9274233 Where do I start? I want to, but I have no motivation. Here's an interesting thing. You want to, but you're not motivated. Where's the disconnect between your want to and your motivation? Because if you want to, you would do it. Maybe you're thinking you have to. Maybe you're thinking, I have to declutter the house. This is getting so awful. You know, you never say I have to go to the beach. I have to go on vacation. I mean, you know, I have to go do something fun. I have to go buy an ice cream. You say, I want to go on. I, I want to go to the beach and then you make it happen. Notice this. Where you start 
kind of doesn't matter except for getting started at all. Now, if you are using the excuse of, or the thought of, I don't know where to start to stop you from even starting or trying, even though I said you can start anywhere, it'll make a difference. I will say this, start with your surface clutter, the stuff that doesn't belong where it is currently now that's on a horizontal surface in your home. Start with that, all right? Trash goes in the trash, recycles go in the recycle bin, um, Mail goes where you open up your mail, put the mail where it's supposed to go, bills that you pay, dishes in the dishwasher, dishes in the away, wherever things are that they're not supposed to be in one room, start there. Start for 20 minutes. There's a whole um, TikTok video that I did about overcoming overwhelm. Overwhelm, chunk it down. You've seen it, all the overs. Notice that. Notice the thoughts you have. I don't know where to start so you don't start. Self-fulfilling prophecy, okay? Um, Okay, notice that, yep, I actually become paralyzed in the moment, paralyzed, Cody OVV is saying, I go back to bed. This is where I'm going to play with the English language, all right? You technically didn't become paralyzed, because if you were paralyzed, you could not go back to bed, because you would actually literally be paralyzed, you could not move your body. What you did was you stopped, and then you turned around, and you went back to bed, okay? Just notice it, okay? Um... Oh, there you go. I'm torn between, so Michelle, you bring up a good point. I'm, I'm torn between keeping my parents' china and slash pewter I liked, liked, versus the style I love. Same right here. I grew up, so I grew up in New England, so my parents loved colonial antiques, traditional, I don't even know, just colonial 1776 type stuff, you know, antique brown, boring stuff. I never connected with that. It never was my thing. And I always just thought I was like, it was just my, like, okay, I guess this is what life is. Some people get it, some people don't. Until I saw something that was like an art deco style. Then I saw something that was mid-century modern. And then I noticed stuff from the early 20th century and even a little bit of art nouveau and things that were a little bit more kind of cool looking in graphic design. And this was in the early 80s when art deco was having a comeback. And I just remembered thinking, ooh, now that's something I like. Notice that it was my thing. It wasn't their, their thing, man, landed to me. I'm like, I got nothing. This doesn't do it for me. That's, so honor what you like, Michelle, but maybe you can keep, here's the thing. Maybe you can keep something of your parents' China period. You don't have to keep it all. Keep a piece of it if you want to, if you want to. Like I have a piece of my grandmother's China in my, right there next to my fiesta wear, because again, I was all into like the 20s and 30s stuff back in the day, and I still am. Um, just notice that you don't need to keep it all. You might be able to incorporate some of it into your own style, make it work. The only reason my mother's, my grandmother's dishes in my cabinet is because there's a kind of some dots of color in the little flowers that matches the colors in my, um, in my, uh, what do you call it? Um, fiesta wear. So keep what you want. Just because that you don't like their stuff doesn't mean you don't like, didn't love them. And just because you loved them doesn't mean you need to love your stuff, okay? Hope that helps. What else we got? Share your space so we can see. You have seen you see enough. And you, there's some videos. Here's a funny thing. Oh, Mother of Three Pearls, nice to see. I, I look forward to you. I don't know what your real name is. You don't need to tell me right now. But yeah, I have a bunch of consultations this week. I will share this with you guys. And I'm not, I'm just letting you know that like, I am surprised. I think it's because it's that whole, the summer's over, that kind of back to school, let me get my act together, the, the holidays are coming, oh my God, the year is almost done, and my house looks the same as it did in January, all that kind of thing. I have a real lot of consultations this week. Um, I will say this kind of just to help you. If you think you want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me this fall before the end of the new year, maybe into new, get yourself on my mailing list. I do not spam you, but I was I do get you guys. You guys get first dibs. Everybody on my on my mailing list took all of the consultation schedules, except for like one. I think I have one left, maybe two. Um, and so if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching or to be even to just to be invited to Zooms and all the good stuff, get on my mailing list. Okay. Like my TikTok page. I love to see the numbers grow. It just is kind of fun. Um but then get on my mailing list. So I look forward, Mother of Three Pearls. Can't, can't wait to see, to match up a, a TikTok name with a name on my calendar, okay? There we go. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Here's a good question. So notice when I said earlier, everybody, 
tick, um, the, the thoughts in your head, make you feel a certain way. And when you feel a certain way, you do a certain thing. This is my life coaching approach to decluttering. I feel so guilty. Notice feeling so guilty. Notice this thought. I feel so guilty about the money I wasted on the things I'm getting rid of. Notice there's a few things going on there. So notice that you have a thought. I feel so gu- I feel so guilty about I wasted money on things. I shouldn't get rid of them, right? I feel so guilty. It makes me feel guilty. It makes me not want to do it. Just notice those words. You didn't waste the money. How about this? Did you really waste the money? You bought the stuff. You used it. You got your money's worth. Now you can donate it. Let me help you with this. I feel so guilty. Guilt is a feeling that keeps you stuck. You're going to be hanging on to stuff if you feel guilty. Am I right? I'm right. I know I'm right because I do the same thing. I feel guilty giving this thing away that I don't want or need or like. But then every time I see it, I'm kind of like, eh, right? Know that when you are hanging on to something because of guilt, there's somebody out there in the world is not connecting up with that thing that they could really use that thing. Okay? Notice that. Also, with the, and thank you, Alexis and one Josh to give some offers. You know what I mean? That, that, that you can sell it, maybe make some money back. I love how an instant community always happens in these TikTok lives where people are, um, you know, offering their advice. And so this is my advice with that too, is here, look at this process, look at this stuff behind the stuff. There is a system that we work in, in the, in, as humans in this, um, society, we are living our lives and, we see something out in the world that we think is going to make our life better. So we say, ooh, hey, you know what? That could make my life better, easier, um, more attractive, more pretty, whatever it is. Then we buy the thing. We spend money on a thing with the hope that it's going to make our life better. Then we get it into our life. One of three things will happen. We either use it and it works. This made my life better. Oh my gosh, this air fryer, this is so freaking handy. It stays. We find a home for it, right? We think something's going to make our life better. We use it and then we realize that it's not really making my life better. I don't use it as much as I thought. Hot pot, our Instapot down the basement, I'm thinking of you. You're not on the counter all the time like the the fryer because we use the fryer, right? But we we had to, we thought it was going to work for us and it didn't. Or it works for us for a certain time until it doesn't. You know, like, oh, that was great, but then we just got tired of eating stews. Just notice that stuff. You see something better, you bring it in, you try it out, you either keep it or you say, yeah, this doesn't work for me. And then you say, lesson learned, money spent, that's okay, and pass it along. That makes it easy. Just notice you're going to be doing, you've done that in your past. You will do that today. You will do that in the future. So just notice that and absolve yourself. Bing, you're absolved from the guilt of I wasted my money. I can't get rid of that stuff. Okay, I feel like the Pope. (laughs) Uh, Okay, Sunflower says, I throw away a bunch of my kids' toys this weekend. I don't even have time to donate it. Notice that, that I don't have time to donate it is a thought, but you can decide whether that's really true or not, right? But it feels good for you to, to get rid of some of this stuff, right? Okay. Notice, though, that this trashing and this kind of thing may not be a sustainable way to deal with things. And I want to (laughs) offer, you're welcome uh, for absolving. What I want to just offer is, again, I always go back to the basics that decluttering is a life skill. The way I coach Beth Destination Declutter, Decluttering Life Coach, the way I approach it is decluttering is a life skill that we have yet, we are we are trying to learn right now, whatever age you are, but also children in the world need to learn how to declutter. And what do I mean? By basically saying, hey, this is a toy that I have. Do I want it or not? And if I don't want it, that's okay. I can let it go. Kids do this. A lot of kids do this organically. I think hanging on to stuff is oftentimes a learned behavior because sometimes parents will guilt kids into, oh, but you used to, you used to play with that when you were a little kid. I remember that right? Just notice this. The more you can get your kids involved, anybody involved, anybody who's living in your home should be involved in the decluttering and the maintenance of your home. You know, that you have the right amount of toys for the kids. And when they play with them, they, after they're done playing with them, they put them away. It's a habit. This is what you do. This is why you probably have surface clutter because you probably haven't put away your own toys. You know, just notice these things. It's a lifelong thing. You know, yeah, I get it. 
I get it, Sunflower. Do not, I'm not trying to guilt you, but I'm just noticing what I would love for you to notice, that it can be, notice when there's too much. Mentally exhausting, throw it away, by hook or by crook at a certain point, but just notice that what got you to that point, try to identify it a few steps beforehand so we can change that so you never get that, you know? Yeah, rubber chicken and rice just says, I learned in my 20s that gimmick appliances are just a waste of money. My stove and oven never fail me. Yeah, what I get, I say is get curious. Get curious if you don't have that thing or you, you know, give it away. Is there something you could use in its stead? You know, like, yeah, we have an oven. We could use that as the fryer thing. It just takes longer. Um, but we use the fryer. We use this one often enough that it's a gimmicky thing, but it works for us because we also are just my husband and me, and we don't need to, you know, do big things of food. Um, but the crock pot, on the other hand, it's like I have a saucepan. Could you use something else for that? You know, there we go. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> my kids were helping throw the toys away, each other's toys. Haha, <laughs> funny. I love it. Um, Terry is saying, I'm de currently decluttering my closet in my bedroom. Donated five bags of clothes on Friday. Rock on with your bad self. Okay. What I want to suggest too is I'm going to be on here for the next 27 minutes because I need a pee break before I jump into coaching and consultations. Um, sorry, this I show up. This is who I really am. So this is what happens. But what I would love to say is what you see right here, if you have the next 27, 25 minutes free, find a way to listen to me on wherever you're listening to me. But Stop looking at the phone and start, or I'm looking at my phone, that's why I said it. Stop looking and start doing. Get up and start decluttering something while I'm chatting in the background. Surface clutter is the easiest thing because you know what to do with that. It's not the sentimental stuff. Notice that it's not just, it is about, it starts up here, but the real action happens when you align what your thoughts and your heart and your hands do, okay? There we go. Christy is saying, I feel better about getting rid of things by posting on my city's Facebook Buy Nothing page. That's a great way. If you can find a way that feels good for you to get rid of things, it'll be easier for you to get rid of things. We just got rid of a table, two tables this week that we didn't use anymore. Um, they were, I really didn't want to charge any money for them. So we had a free sign out on our lawn. It took a while, but somebody picked up the two tables. Whatever way, the easy way for you to get rid of things, if it means throwing it away, throw it away. I'm not going to judge. But what I want to offer is make it easy for you to get the result you want, you know? Silver Girl 747 is saying, I feel like, notice feel, I cannot get rid of the things that were my parents or grandparents from 70 years ago. Thought, feeling, not getting rid of. Notice the connection between your head, your heart, and your hands, okay? I would ask this, Silver Girl 747, if you and I were, um, okay, and synergy, there we go, is um, why not? Why not? There's a thought there. Behind that thought is another thought. Well, because it was theirs. It reminds me of theirs. They spent a lot of money on it. It meant a lot to them. Whatever the thoughts are, notice that this category of clutter you're talking about is the sentimental stuff. This is not surface. This is not stored. I mean, it's probably stored, right? But it's also sentimental. Sentimental clutter is the one that we spend, expend the most energy on. Um, this is because it involves your head and your heart and your feelings, and your memories, and your emotions, there's a lot going on there. I think, I say this sometimes on the flip-flop. Let me try to say it again. What I want to just offer you to think of, right? I'm just, I'm giving you a seed. You can plant it in the, in the garden of your, of your brain, and water it if you like to, but just because you loved the people doesn't mean you need to love their stuff, okay? On the flip side, just because you don't love their stuff doesn't mean you didn't love those people. It's as simple as that. They had stuff in their lives that they loved, that they used, that they got value out of. That was them. That was them. This is now I'm totally Gen X music in my head all the time. That was them. What do you want in your life? Synergy? Silver Girl, Gen Xers, all of us. This is why I think I'm showing up in the universe at this right time because we have, we see that stuff and it's like we have enough of our own stuff and then we get more of it. This is when you have to double down and be like, yeah, what do I want in my life? And that's just as important as what they wanted in their lives. It's a thought that you have that you can't get rid of it. 
There's another thought. You can say, I can get rid of this stuff. It doesn't mean I didn't love them. I want to have a house that's filled with stuff that I love. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay? Just notice that. Wonder Woman, first time here. Welcome, welcome. Dishes and laundry while listening. Appreciate the motivation. Yay, and guess what? In like 20 some odd minutes, you're going to have cleaner dishes and cleaner um, laundries. And it would have been, notice how it can be fun when you make things fun. This is how I coach. I like to make things fun. I, I treat it like a road trip. I'm always breaking out into goofy songs or making pop culture references because this is how I communicate with the world because I'm a Gen Xer and just this is who I am. But when you make it fun, when you make it not even fun, like, whoa, look at me, I'm doing the dishes. But when you make it not so arduous, when you're like, this isn't so bad, I can do this, and then you do it, that's when your home and your life start to look like you want it to, okay? So just notice it, okay? Yeah, make it easy to get the results you want. Okay, here, I've zipped through a few things. Let me do a few things. Love it. Margaret just cleaned out a kitchen cupboard, threw out a bunch of expired stuff. Everybody, go through one cabinet today. Go through one shelf of a cabinet and just double check that nothing is got bugs in it. That happened to us once with rice. I, I didn't know. Um, like, it has, isn't expired. Or if it's going to expire within the next three months and you don't think you're going to use it, just start a bag for your local food pantry, Okay. Just do this. We have, I, I did a TikTok um, video recently about like our habits, our shopping habits because of COVID and post COVID. And are we still buying the same stuff? Our lives change all the time. Make sure what you're buying now matches up to the life you have now. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Michelle, notice I've avoided going through my parents' items because once the majority is donated, their chapter ends. No, no, no. Notice that's just a thought you have. That's just a thought your brain is offering. I want to offer your brain another thought. Their chapter never ends because they don't live in the stuff. They live in your heart. My dad has been gone since 2010. I have a smidge of things in the house that are his, but very few. He lives in my heart. I never forget him because I don't have all this stuff that he collected in his life, right? Just notice that you have a thought that you're, you're scared. You have a fear-based thought. That's what it is. Fear on one side, love on the other. That if I, if I get rid of their stuff, I'm going to forget them. They're going to be over. Just notice that thought and ask, really ask yourself, is that really true? I think the answer may surprise you and it might encourage you. Okay. Becky is saying, I want to donate clothes. When I mention it to others, I'm shamed into giving it to the right place. Okay, Becky, what I want to offer is this has nothing to do with others. This has to do with you. This is why I show up. I am showing up to hundreds of people right now, but I am showing up for every single one of you irregardless, I know I'm using the wrong word, it's for effect, okay? I, I crack myself up. Regardless of whoever is out in your world, I don't really care about them. I care about you in your life. Find a place that is easy for you to donate the clothes because your feeling better in your life with fewer clothes in it is more important than finding the exact right place. That finding the right place, the perfect place, perfection, is it like just um, per procrastination in like a, a sheep suit, right? I'm sure there's a place you feel okay about donating near you. Get the donations out and start living your life, okay? Interesting. DSN Birch is saying, I'm currently trying to figure out what to keep from my daughter's preschool and elementary stuff. Okay, DSN Birch, what I would love for you to do is, regardless, of, irregardless, I'm going to start using that by accident a lot, get your daughter involved. Get your daughter involved. Why are you saving this? Are you saving it for, because you're you're thinking that at some point in the future, she may want to see this stuff? Go through it with her now. See what she wants to save. See some of the stuff that she doesn't want anymore, okay? Don't do it alone, people. You get a coach, you get me. There's other people. And I know I just said, like, you know, some people will say don't do it the right place, but when you're saving something kind of for somebody else, get them involved, okay? What are we else, what else we got? Uh, 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 okay. See, I love this. Some people are asking, you know, I love this. I get a sh I, I want to thank you all because when I am talking to one person, there's no way I can physically or mentally be talking to everybody, but I love how you're all helping each other out. Notice that even when you have something you're struggling with, you still have something in you that can benefit somebody else. Okay. There we go. Yep. Uh, love it. Love it. Good stuff. You guys keep on going. Um, okay. What do we got? Uh, 
Oh, yeah, I send out email as well. So, yes, I do. Um, thank you for reminding me, Sunflower. DestinationDeclutter.com slash join is my email mailing list. Let me just make sure that's working correctly. Am I getting any? Has anybody signed up? Oh, I've got some people signing up. Cool. Um, what I want to offer is every little bit helps, okay? Getting an email, signing up, doing a TikTok live. Like what I do is I want to show up little bits at a time for you to help you because I want you to remember that you got this. You can do this. You, it, it, it's getting overwhelmed by the enormity of it. It just keeps you stuck. Start small and show up, okay? I love it. Wonder Woman number two says, I have gotten better at reducing the emotional attachment to things and it feels so good. There's a good emotional attachment feeling and there's a bad, like a not so good emotional attachment feeling. Notice that sometimes you can feel better when you detach yourself from things. Lorena Ruiz, first time listener. Nice to see you. My name is Beth. I'm a decluttering life coach. Um, I do TikTok lives on occasion. Uh, the schedule is posted at the top of my um, TikTok page. If you could like my TikTok page, that would be cool. Um, what else? I have an email mailing list, destinationdeclutter.com. I think I'm going to choke. Excuse me. And I do one-on-one um, -on -one coaching with people. The only way you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me is to sign up for a consultation. I will be honest, I think I maybe have one consultation left this week at all. And depending upon how my consultations go this week, my um, coaching availability may declutter. Yeah, Friday, Psst, Friday, Eastern time, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. There's two slots left if you're interested in me being your one-on-one -on -one coach for paid coaching. Okay, that's how we start. Um, Talisa is saying, I decluttered my entire bedroom and it feels so nice. Notice people, it feels so nice. It feels so much better. I feel so much better now that I've done that. It feels so good. And that's when I want to start singing Chuck Mangione, right? Notice that. It's easy for me to keep up with the pantry and donate. Notice the ease. We're going for better. We're going for good. We're going for ease. Regardless of, you know, Marie Kondo or Pinterest or Instagram or anything, I want you to live in a home that looks good to you. So you feel good when you're in it. And the way that you interact in it is efficient and easy. So you spend the least amount of time doing the things you don't want to do. Therefore, you have the most amount of time for yourself to do the things you want to do. Okay. That's my, that's my MO. That's my, with every single client, that's my destination. Regardless of their specifics, I want you to live in a home that looks good to you so you feel good and it runs efficiently so you can then spend more time in your life. I don't want you to be a housewife. What was it? I had a client this morning. I don't know if she's on today because we, I get most of my clients through TikTok and she was saying how it's true. It's like a housewife. You mean you're married to your house? No, I want you to be married to yourself. I want you to go out and do things with your one life that only you can do. Okay. That's what I do. Oh, there you go. Karen got some stuff expired from her shelf, even though it's first time here. Doesn't it feel so good? Yeah. Less overwhelming. It's, oh, the overwhelm, again, it's just going to keep you stuck. Chunk down the overwhelm. It is. Notice this. Okay. User 99254. I have a hard time getting rid of clothes, even old and torn, because I don't want to fill the landfills. I fill a bag and take it to H&M for textile recycling. I love that you found a solution that works for you. Notice you had a thought that was keeping you stuck until you said, yeah, but I can bring it to H&M for textile recycling. I, and I'll be honest with you, I kind of forgot that they do that. I'm going to write that down. Maybe I'll do a TikTok about that. And so thank you for the inspo. Um, let me make sure I'm writing it down in the right place. Here we go. H&M textile. Thank you for that. And I love it. And it's, isn't it easy when you find a place that feels better? But the other thing I will say is do not let the, it's going to end up in a landfill, stop you from getting it out of your house. Because here, here is where I'm going to be blunt in New England. And you don't want to hear this, but every single one of us and all of our stuff will, will end up in a landfill one day. It will. It's just the way that the, the universe, the world turns. Okay. So why make your one short stint on this planet miserable being surrounded by stuff when you know as soon as you're dead, somebody's going to pitch it in a, in a dumpster and get it out of your home now. Enjoy your life while you have it. Okay, please do. Yep, I struggle with sell versus donate. I could use the money, but I don't have free time as a full-time working mom. Okay, well then notice that maybe it's okay that you, you know, what? what's how much would you pay for your peace of mind? How much would you pay to feel better and just have it done? 
Pay yourself for it. Pretend you bought the clothes from yourself. Donate them and say, yeah, it cost me 50 bucks or whatever, $20. I just, you know, it's going to, but it, how much are you worth? Only you can answer that. But what I want to say is sometimes your free time, your is money well spent. Okay. Notice that. Whoa, a lot of things just flew by. Yeah. I have about 10 landfills in my name. Yeah. I need help starting for number one. I was never taught organizing. My house is never in order. Okay. McKay family farm. Notice. Just notice this. Yeah. You were never taught organizing. Organizing is a skill. I grew up in a cluttered home. The only reason I have a lot of these skills, frankly, is I always had this innate ability to put like items together to get control over my situation, probably because um, decluttered, you know, living in a cluttered home. But also for one of my very first jobs um, out of college, no, even when I was in college, was Pier 1 Imports. So I learned how to visual merchandise. I knew how to take the overall. I knew how to make things look good, right? And then another job of mine was a process engineer in a corporate environment. And I knew how to make systems that work, right? I also have sold um, and collected mid-century modern things like all my life. So I know how to, um, you know, make things look good. So it is a skill you can learn, okay? And if you haven't learned it now, maybe now's a good time to learn it so that you live a life that you love, you know? Okay. Oh, Mrs. NYC, I look amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, my country government page has a pickup dedicated to drop offs and pickups a city mission. I love it. Yes. So here's the thing. When I do a TikTok live, I am talking to people from maybe all over the world. So where you live may have different resources than when I live. But get curious. Curiosity and love on this side right here. Curiosity and love is going to get you to all the places you want to go. Curiosity, love, confidence, all that stuff. Okay. Go do a Google search. Where can I donate old uh, electrical equipment? Um, where is there a shredding event? Where can I donate textiles? Where can I, um, you know, offer things up for free? Okay. Um, Sunny Cruiser, the memories. How do I get rid of the items with the memories? You remember, my dear. Oh, uh, you, you, the memories, the thing triggers the memory, but the memory is in you. The memory is not in the thing, right? If you have a memory, write it down. Take a picture of it. Tell yourself the story. Share the story with somebody. Okay. Notice that. Oh, I love this. So greetings and love from Frankfurt, Germany. Right back at you, go, go limbo. Because, you know, here's the deal. As I usually am talking to people, I always feel like decluttering is a, um, a U.S.-based thing because of our capitalist society and the way that we are post-war, World War II. You know, I have a lot of thoughts about this because it's what I think about and all the time and I live in it. But I like to see when people from all over the world, as ELO would say, or the orchestra would say, is there. You know, but notice you won't get rid of if you won't get rid of the memories if you get rid of the thing. If the memory is important to you, write down the memory, take a picture of the item, um, make a video of you telling the story of the item. There's other ways that you can save the memory without having to save the stuff. Elizabeth, I'm right there with you. My parents were hoarders, so I was determined to be organized. I grew up in a cluttered, creative collector household. Um, I know that feeling of feeling overwhelmed with stuff. I prefer a feeling of feeling in control of my things and making it so much more efficient and easy to live in my home. I pay my bills on time, stuff's in order. It just feels good, right? Notice this stuff. What else do we have? Um, yeah, see, I love this. All sorts of good stuff. Social media groups. Yep, love it. Um, okay, Jennifer George uh, Eng. I have ADHD. Do you have some different advice for me? Nope. No, I don't because I work with ADHD people. I have ADHD in my family. I probably have a tinge of it myself. What I like to say, this is how I coach. Everybody's brain is different and let's embrace that. Everybody is different. Let's embrace that. What I say is what you should do, what we could work with if we were coaching, is for you to find systems and processes that work for your brain to get the results you want. Now, I say this because the more I coach and the more I, I learn about the um, the specifics about ADHD, I think, wow, maybe I have that because I do have to be reminded to do certain things that may be more habit-like from other people. So you know what I do? I have a habit tracker. I made this habit tracker for myself. I made it fun because I wanted it to be like a road trip across the US. And then I offer it to free for the people that sign up for my email mailing list. I need to be reminded. I need to remind myself to drink water. I need to remind myself, even though I've done Duolingo since March of 2020, every day I'm like, oh, that's right. I have to do that. No big deal. I don't, I don't ADHD shame myself. 
Not that I'm suggesting that you do, but what I will say is find a system that works for you. One of the systems that works for me is that like on my little Duolingo app, it has that little red dot that reminds me to do it. Habits, you know, tracking your habits, setting reminders, setting alarms, find tools that work for you to get the results you want. That's how I say for everybody. And then commit to yourself to use those tools enough to make it more of a habit to do them. Okay. Yeah, everybody's got ADHD in their own ways, you know? Yeah, habit tracker, wicked easy. Like you write down your habits here. Like when you get one of these for me, and I'm not trying to sell it to you, I can't sell it to you if it's for free, right? Just getting on my mailing list. You get two of these. They're both PDFs. You can print them out for the rest of your life. One of them has like 10 things about decluttering to make you like over here. And then what you do is you just put the dates in here and then you say, okay, every day I want to commit to doing something. Each one of these is a day. And then you're kind of paving your way across the U.S. It's like a little car going choo, 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 choo. And since I'm East Coast, I start mine over here. You can start yours West Coast, whatever. Um, but I have some things that I've been slacking on, you know, getting my 10,000 steps, drinking more water in the morning, right? So right now, remembering to do that, right? There we go. Silver Girl 747 is asking, how do you get the husband and kids motivated and involved? Great question. Great question. It's such an important thing to do, especially because we want to undo some of these things where it's like, um, it's just the woman's job to do the house stuff. And just she said that I call bullshit on that. If you don't like that, then I may not be the coach for you. But what I want to say is I'll go back to the basics that two things I started with the very beginning. If you're watching this, um, uh, through on the Destination Decluttered YouTube page where this is, don't, this, I'll down, download this and upload it. One is that decluttering is a life skill. So de no matter how old you are, it's an important skill to learn and to practice. So your kiddos and your husband or whomever needs to learn this if they don't know how to do it ever, um, already, which is to learn to declutter and to stay decluttered, which is decision-making about what you keep and what you give away and decision-making on a daily basis of where you put things. Simple as that. The way to get them involved and motivated is why don't you all, I'm sure if the home is, your home is cluttered, it's, it's making everybody feel like it doesn't look good, it doesn't feel good, and it doesn't function well, right? Have a convo with your family. Have a family meeting. What do we all want this place to look and feel like? Don't you want to invite friends over? You know, don't, wouldn't it be easier to get stuff? You know, there's a way that you can all create a family destination where it looks better, it feels better, and it functions better for all of you. And that can be the motivator for you guys to all remind yourself that you all participate in getting there. It's like a family road trip versus just you, okay? There we go. Um, okay, so notice this. Any advice on getting rid of holiday decorating items? Yeah, Davida, I do, because I used to decorate with stuff a real lot. I liked that maximalist, like, kitschy, vintage thing for a while. I liked it until I didn't. And I found it was more of a chore to me to put it out. So I actually ended up dreading decorating for the, the holidays. I would say this, get your stuff out earlier than you think and make, um, you know, make a decision. Do I want this or, or not? And there's going to be places where you can donate it. You might be able to sell it. Maybe there's somebody who's been admiring your decor who you would want to give it away. I gave away a bunch of my really cool vintage um, Christmas stuff to my sister because she really likes it. Right. There we go. Um, okay, Lisa V and somebody else is saying something about um, other people in the home being impossible. Impossible is kind of a drama word. I would I would get curious about that. And they bring horrible attitudes. Okay, notice that the way you're approaching it, and I'm not saying it's you, notice that your vibe, your energy behind something is going to make it whether you, you're going to do it because somebody's yelling at you, you have to clean your room. To me, I'll be like, I'm a grown up. I don't have to do anything, right? A lot of us react to that kind of thing. I know I do. A little bit of anarchist in me. But what I want to offer is, but when you're like, wouldn't it be good for all of us? Like, I really think, wouldn't it be cool if you can start to share the excitement of what it's going to look and feel and function like for everybody? That might encourage them to do the things. Okay? The other fact of the matter, too, is I don't know about you, but I get lazy. If somebody else is going to do something for me, I'm used to it. Then somebody says, no, I'm going to stop doing this and you're going to have to do it. I might try to pitch a fit in the hopes that they're going to change their mind. So just notice that may be happening. But with both of your, but with your kids and also your, your husband or your spouse, this is a life, this is a life journey. This is a thing you should learn in your life. 
your kids are going to need to do this when they move out of their house. Your kids are going to need to know this when they're alone, when they're in a dorm room, when they're in an apartment, when they have like a, like, you know, a, and a roommate needing to know how to deal with your stuff is an important life lesson. So being a good parent means getting your kiddos. It may be tough love. You've seen like the, the mama bird in the nest. She's helping these kids. It may not look good, but she's doing it for the long. She knows it's going to be better. Okay. Just notice that being a mama bird. Okay. Uh, my kid always says our home is more organized than their friends. Interesting, Elizabeth, that can be good, but also that kind of comparison is depends on their house, their, their friends houses could be really a shambles. I don't know. Um, okay. Sunny cruiser. I donate then have regrets that I let the item go. How can I stop these recurring thoughts? Stopping them. It's awful. Notice that. Notice that. Okay. McKay family farm. I just saw that there's a TikTok. Um, uh, this is me getting distracted. I apologize. I should have focused more. Um, but on the top of my, uh, TikTok, um, thing is a pinned thing of my schedule, but yeah, so Sunny Cruiser, really important. I want to spend some time with this. Okay. Is when you have donated in the past, you have had some regrets, regrets are thoughts that said, I shouldn't have donated this, right? Notice what that thought is. One of the particular thoughts, why, what is that one item that you wish you didn't let go of? Just notice that. And then say to yourself, okay, well, lesson learned, I can't get it back, but if I need it, could I get a replacement? You know, stopping the recurring thoughts. That is the brilliance of, that's what coaching is all about, is stopping. I'm always putting out my little traffic cop hand, like, or stop in the name of love. If I put my arm out like this and this, I, then I'm like Diana Ross and the Supreme. Stop in the name of love. Stop those recurring thoughts because you can't do anything about it. Say, I can't do anything about that, but I can do something better next time. And notice too, when you donated something, what was your thought process behind it, right? We will, I, I am a life coach doing decluttering all the freaking time. I have donated items that I didn't think I was going to use. And then months or days later, sometimes it has happened that it's like, oh, I could have used that. And what I say is, oh, well, oh, well, I don't have it now. What can I use instead? Can I borrow one from somebody? Can I, can I, you know, ask for one for free? Like, do I have to buy another one? Do I own something that could be used at the, the same purpose? Okay. Notice that. Yeah. Goal oriented, goal oriented. I like goals. Goals to me is a, I, I like the word destination better because I like to travel, right? You know, notice that. Um, yeah. And I, I know a lot, you know, some, I love it. People are often things. I love it. Thank you for saying, um, you know, what do you call it? Uh, somebody was just asking about stuffed animals and somebody's got some answers. Yeah. It depends. Some places don't do those anymore. Some people don't um, donate them. Find out there might be some places that donate them. I do know. I don't know much of the details, but you might want to find in your area. Sometimes there are um, places where kids that are in foster care or the police or something like that have some stuffed animals and they might have things for kiddos that don't have anything. So you might think about that. Okay. Um, this has been so much fun. Um, I need to sign off because I'm jumping into coaching one-on-one -on -one and also doing consultations for people, but I want to thank everybody for showing up. A couple of things real quick. Um, Destination Decluttered on YouTube is where this will be downloaded and uploaded. Um, please follow my page and um, I will see you the next time I do a TikTok live. I think it's tomorrow. Yep, tomorrow morning. You can check on what time it is. All right. And you've got this. You've got this. You know how to do this and you deserve it. Okay. You deserve to live a life you love. Drive in the direction of those dreams, people. I love it. You've got it, people. Okay. I will see you tomorrow. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.